Hello again, everybody. It's me, Marcus, and I review stuff. Today I'm reviewing the song Reel Around the Fountain by The Smiths. I've been getting a lot of requests for The Smiths, and rightfully so. A lot of their music has been very enjoyable so far. Uh, you know, and, and I still I still harken back to my very first reaction from them, and I just I didn't like them. I I just couldn't get into uh, Morrissey's voice. I couldn't get into the song, but um, you know they've since grown on me a whole lot, and I've I've actually very much enjoyed reacting to them uh, on the channel and hearing more of their music. A lot of their songs have made my playlist and get a pretty decent rotation. Um, I think the biggest thing for me is the uh, the lyricism. I feel like as a self-proclaimed lyrics guy, I just love listening to and reading very uh, deep, introspective, or just interesting lyrics, you know? Um, and so I think that's the one thing that's really drawn me to the Smiths, is like they always have at least one or two lines in every song that really made me go, wow, yeah, cool, that's awesome. What a great line, or what have you, you know? It's like, uh, uh, the, uh, I guess, I don't know if it's Morrissey who writes all their lyrics, but like they just have such a great way of connecting uh, with me, and, and I can see why so many people liked this band. A lot of you in the comments have told me, like, yeah, this was like the band you'd listen to when you were uh, like a rebellious teenage youth, or when you were going through like some struggles and whatnot, and I can see that, because again, there's a lot of those lines in there that uh, a lot of people, I feel like, can really empathize with. So yeah, for sure, really like this band's lyricism, really hoping for some good lyrics here in this one. So anyway, let's listen to it. Reel Around the Fountain, dismiss.
about you last night And I fell out of bed twice You can pin and mount me Like a butterfly But take me to the heaven of your bed Was something that you never said enjoyed that i think i think um kind of the the uh, rhythm the beat the piano even i think made this sound a little bit like a sweeter song than what you usually get from like the, the smiths um although you know I'm not, I'm not entirely sure yet if i should call it sweet because i just feel like all their songs have that very i don't want to say thin layer just have that layer of depression about them so i, I don't know if i want to say like this is a sweet song but it's just a lot sweeter sounding i will say uh, kind of with the piano and with the way that the song was composed. Um, but yeah, I really enjoyed this one. Um, I'm actually excited to jump into the lyrics here, so I'm going to go ahead and get started right away. Um, now, there is something I want to read here on the side. It says, um, From the Smiths' eponymous first album, Reel Around the Fountain met with controversy, with some tabloid newspapers alleging the songs uh, were suggestive of pedophilia, a claim strongly denied by the group. You know, I could kind of see it right here in this first verse. It's time the te- it's time the tale were told of how you took a child and made him old. I could see how some people might point to pedophilia on that one. But uh, Morrissey goes on to say that uh, Morrissey was quoted in an interview uh, with Rolling Stone magazine saying that the song is about loss of innocence, uh, that until one has a physical commitment to another person, there's something childlike about the soul, which I can, I can see that as well. Um, so I think it's interesting. Um, it seems like, honestly, um, a lot of the songs off this album were uh, met with controversy. So, so far I've heard Reel Around the Fountain, I've heard, um, did I listen to The Hand That Rocks the Cradle? No, I think I've had that one as a request, but I have not listened to it yet. Um, pretty sure. I've heard This Charming Man. I've heard uh, Suffer Little Children off this album. So those three songs. And I remember Suffer Little Children was met with controversy because of uh, its subject matter. So, yeah, it seems like this band wasn't afraid to get a, a little controversial, although this one, in this song, it is maybe a little unwarranted, if you will. Um, could they have um, written it in a way that made it much more clear that it that you know uh, it was about that sort of uh, loss of innocence? Yeah, you know. But hindsight's twenty twenty, and and the lyrics are what they are. But anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and read the lyrics. It says, "It's time uh, the tale were told of how you took a child and how you made him old. It's time a tale were told a tale were told um, of how you took a child and made him old. You made him old." Reeling around the fountain, slap me on the patio, I'll take it now. Oh, so it sounds like um, apparently a reel in the UK and Ireland is a type of dance. Okay, so like dance around the fountain. Um, Interesting. Um, Hmm. Okay. Good to know. I'm glad uh, because I had no idea what that necessarily meant. 
uh, slap me on the patio in England. Slap or tickle is slang for sexual play. Okay, all right, great. So let's dance around the fountain, but then let's it's fool around on the patio. I'll take it now. Oh, okay. So yeah, it sounds like uh, uh, this young man or uh, young man meets another young man or no, young woman. I have no idea. Uh, you know, they decide to get a little busy. It's, you know, it's nothing wrong with that. Um, but I think, again, it's, he's talking about that loss of innocence where um, it's like, oh, this is like my first physical relationship. So I'm, I'm going from like being a child to being like a man or being, a, a, you know, a full grown adult, um, which I think a lot of people still have that that um, connotation around sex and sexual activity is that, yeah, like that's when you become like an adult or whatever, which, you know, I, I kind of disagree with that to a certain extent, but um uh, I can see, you know, what what he's saying here, uh, and, and how that goes back to the Morrissey quote that I had read before I read the lyrics. So, uh, fifteen minutes with you, well, I wouldn't say no. Oh, people said that you were virtually dead, and they were so wrong. So maybe this is a person that not a lot of other people see value in, but the protagonist of the song, maybe even Morrissey himself, sees the value in this person. Um, and, and he kind of makes that clear in, in a line a little bit later on. Uh, but where he says, oh, people say that you're virtually dead. So like, this person is just like, um, I guess the people see him as like a good for nothing or like uh, that they just are living a meaningless life or what have you. Um, but he's saying like, oh, th those people don't know you the way that I know you, I think is kind of what, what he's saying here. 15 minutes with you, oh, well, I wouldn't say no. Oh, people said that you were easily led, and they were half right. So that's kind of funny. Um, you know, easily led. I'm imagining like um, that you're you're easy to convince, or you're easy to kind of uh, take along. I guess if I, I don't know how to put it, but uh, and and I like that they were half right. So it's like yeah, you know, it was kind of easy getting with you, but you know, not as easy as as some people might claim. Um, oh, they oh they were half right. Oh. Um, it's time the tale we're told of how you took a child and you made him old. So it does sound like this person is uh, his first uh, you know, again, physical relationship. Um, it's time that the tale we're told of how you took a child and made him old. And so his relationship with this person is what kind of brings him, at, I think, in his eyes, into adulthood. Um, so, um, oh, reel around the fountain, slap me on the patio, I'll take it now. Uh, 15 minutes with you, I uh, wouldn't say no. Oh, people see no worth in you. Oh, but I do. So again, it sounds to me like this other person just, people are putting this other person down. Like, you know, they're, they're not worth anything. They're, 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 uh, I don't know what the word I'm looking for is pointless. I guess I, uh, useless. They're useless. There's, uh, you know, there's no good in them. They, you know, there's no worth, um, that they're just easily led along, but he, he's saying like, you know, other people may not see the value in you, but I do. And I, I love that. Um, and I don't, and I hope, I guess my hope is that uh, he sees that person in a very positive light in more ways than just physical. Um, you know, um, so 15 minutes with you, oh, I wouldn't say no. Oh, people see no worth in you. I do. Oh, I, oh, I do. Um, I dreamt about you last night, and I fell out of bed twice. You can pin and mount me like a butterfly, but take me to the haven of your bed was something that you never said. Okay, so uh, this is a very physical relationship, and, and hell, they. Uh, <laughs> I love that that uh, metaphor. You can or uh, that simile. You can pin and mount me like a butterfly, because like you know when you take a butterfly and you press it, or you pin it and and you display it like it's a beautiful thing. But in this case, of course, pin and mount uh, it is more so referencing like sexual activity. So I think that's a this is a really clever simile. I feel like um, I think that's just really cool, really good writing um, to just make it like a very interesting way to say something just absolutely out there. Um, but take me to the haven of your bed was something that you never said. Two lumps, please. You're the bee's knees, but so am I. Um, interesting. Um, so I, I guess yeah, again, this person means a lot to him. So it's just kind of like I dreamt about you. You know, I even dreamt about sex. I, you know, that's how physically attracted I am to you. That I just I'm thinking about it all the time at this point. Um, but then this this part kind of confuses me. But take me to the haven of your bed was something that you never said. So they just like doing it wherever, uh, and they actually have never seen each other's houses. I'm not entirely sure. Um, two lumps, please, like two, you know, two lumps of sugar. Um, 
you're the you're the bee's knees and, and bee's knees just means like you're really cool you're great and so am i so i think it's interesting this person's like saying like, i'm really cool too you know you're great but i but i am also and i'm wondering if maybe this is a part where again take uh take me to the ha haven of your bed was something you never said so actually it sounds to me like one person is wanting more out of this relationship they're wanting something maybe emotional um Whereas this other person is just in it for the physical activity. And so I think this could be where the person's standing up for themselves. Like, you're so cool, but so am I. So maybe I deserve better than just being used as a physical relationship. Maybe I deserve more than that, if you will. Um, oh, meet me at the fountain, shove me on the patio. Uh, I'll take it slowly. 15 minutes with you, oh, I wouldn't say no. Oh, people see no worth in you, but I do. Uh, 15 minutes with you, uh, I wouldn't say no, but people see no worth in you, I do. Okay. So, uh, yeah, I also wonder, now that I kind of read the whole thing again, um, I wonder if it's about, like, entering this physical relationship with this person, of course, and they're kind of your first physical relationship, and, and you sort of lose it. Innocence is more, as he says. Um, but then being kind of a young, innocent person, you're, you're wanting more out of that. You're, you're equating the physical relationship with wanting more, like, emotionally and stuff like that. But the other person is not wanting that. And, and maybe it's because they've been told they're worthless or what have you. They're only good as, a as, as you know, a one-night stand or what have you. But... Um, I think in this song, the protagonist is saying, like, no, you're, you're worth so much more than that to me. Um, but the other person won't break down that wall. You know, I think it's a lot more complex than I think uh, an initial listening uh, would give you. So that's why I'm always glad that I get a chance to really sit with the lyrics and kind of read about them and uh, think about what they're, what they're saying. So, yeah, that's kind of the message that I get. And I feel like a lot of people uh, have been relatable for a lot of people. I can't say it's ever been relatable for me, but um, I, I think it's pretty neat. Um, really great writing. As always, they give me a line or two in, the, in this song that I can really grasp onto. But, like, oh, it's a great line. Uh, I give it two thumbs up lyrically, as I have probably every Smith song. I'm just, I, I love their style of writing. Again, they, they have really great ways of using metaphor, simile, to really just get across uh, some really cool topics. Um, and then they just, uh, it, it seems like uh, Morrissey's really big on just being kind and, and, and appreciating the light in others. And that's kind of a, a vibe that, it, as depressing as a lot of Smith's songs are, it's always like that, 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 that the, the connecting thread is that there is some worth out there and that it's worth it to be kind and to see the good in others, I think. Um, that's kind of a, a connecting thread I've seen throughout that. So, love it lyrically. Um, as I mentioned right when the song ended instrumentally, there were a few things going on here. Um, I, I liked the uh, piano. I'm starting to, like, after talking about the lyrics for so long, I'm starting the the actual instrumentation starting to fade in my head a little bit. But I liked the piano throughout. Like I said, it made it seem like a much happier song than it than it kind of was. Um, Morrissey sounds great in this one as always. Um, I I think this one sounded a little bit more upbeat instrumentally, but of course you just still have his like. Uh, almost depressing sounding singing that to go along with it um, but it, it really works uh, with the style of music that they play um, I liked the drum beat I think I mentioned um, like kind of the rhythm that it kept throughout the song um, you know I didn't pay as much attention to the guitar but there were some parts here and there that I kind of liked um, and then it sounded like uh, I guess they were just using a keyboard but there were parts that sounded more like an organ and parts that sounded more like just like a piano I guess um, and, and I think it just made for a really interesting song a really well composed song um, I remember enjoying it. Like again, after talking about the lyrics, my mind is just mush. But uh, I remember enjoying it instrumentally upon listening to it. So I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to give it another listen and and really pin down what I enjoyed about it. But um, yeah, I'm giving it two thumbs up still, just because I do remember having a great time listening to it. Not just the lyrics, but the singing and the instrumentation as well. Um, and then as far as replay value goes, honestly, every Smith song I've heard so far on this channel, I've added to my playlist. You know, some get uh, more play time than others. You know, I will say, um, I know it's over has probably become one of my most played songs by by them. Uh, but this charming man gets a few plays, and uh, there's a light that never goes out. Gets a couple plays. I think this is one. This one's gonna get a few plays. So uh, I'm not sure where to put it as far as replay value. I mean, obviously this is a very popular song. A lot of people enjoy it. A lot of people seem to really enjoy this album. I do have a lot more um, suggestions from this album, or a lot of requests from you guys, which I will be getting to. Don't worry. Uh, so I'm not really sure where to place it. Um, as far as re replayability goes, I guess I'll give it like a thumb and a half. Just because, you know, I, I will listen to it again and I will enjoy it uh, time and time again. I feel like 
Um, but with Smith songs, I don't listen. They're not songs that I go seeking out all the time. They're more so just songs that when they come on, yeah, I'm just like, oh, okay, yeah, I'll listen to this. This is good. Um, so, you know, it, it's one of those. But still really enjoyed the song. I thank you so much for the request. A lot of people have requested this one. Actually, a lot of people have requested Smiths in general. I'll probably just end up listening to their entire discography by the time, you know, uh, I'm done with, with the Smiths. So, um, you know, we'll get there. Uh, just keep keep the requests coming. And I promise, again, I will I will get to the other Smiths request. Just because I haven't covered your favorite Smith songs yet does not mean I won't get to them. I will, will certainly get to them, okay? Um, so that's it for me. If you enjoyed the music, go check out the artist. Uh, one place you can find them is on Spotify. They're going to be in my playlist, actually, my Spotify playlist. It's got every single song I've listened to so far on my channel. Thanks for a pretty great day of listening. If you want to support me, just all the normal stuff you do on YouTube. You guys like and subscribe and comment. That's it for me. Hope you're staying safe and healthy, and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye.